One of the new features in Streams 031 is support for leader election and running cluster operator in multiple replicas. And in this video, we will look at this feature in more detail. Leader election in Streamzy is built using the Kubernetes lease resource. The lease resource is used to identify the holder of the lease and also the time when the holder was last alive. When the first instance of the cluster operator starts, it will use the lease resource to take the lock and it will periodically update the time to indicate that it is still alive. Any other instance of the cluster operator which starts will see that the lease is currently taken and it will wait in the standby mode. If the first instance dies, it will not update the lease time and the standby replica will see that the lease is not locked anymore and it will take it and become the new leader. And later, when the initial pod is rescheduled, it will see that someone else took the lease and it will now be running in the standby mode. Let's have a look at how the leader election works in an actual Kubernetes cluster. When I check my namespace, you can see that right now there are no pods running in it. So what I will do is I will deploy the Streamsy cluster operator. Out of the box, Streamsy enables the leader election, but runs the operator only with a single replica. So when I get the pods now, I can see that I have one pod running, which is just starting. Let's check the log of this pod. What we can see here is that the pod started, was for a few milliseconds waiting to become a leader, and then because no other pod is running, it became the new leader, and it started operating the cluster. So we can now see that it's actually watching for the custom resources, and if you would create one, it will start deploying the Kafka cluster. We can also check the deployment. When I scroll down to the environment variables configuration, you can see that there are several environment variables configuring the leader election. There is the environment variable streams the leader election enabled, which is set to true. If you want to disable the leader election, you can change it and set it to false. There's also the name of the leader election lease resource, which will be used to facilitate the leader election. And you can also configure the namespace in which it will be created, which by default is the namespace where the operator is running. You can also configure the leader election identity, which is the identity under which the operator will hold the leader election lock, and it defaults to the name of the pod. In addition to these options, you can also configure the different times related to the leader election. For how long is the leader election valid? How often does the operator update the lease resource to indicate that it's still alive? And so on. You can find all the options in our documentation. Now, let's have a look what happens when we scale the cluster operator to run in two replicas. When I get the pods now, I can see that there's a new replica of the cluster operator starting. I can check the logs again. And what I can see is that it starts, it starts waiting to become the leader, but the new leader is still the pod cluster operator with the suffix rqzgx, which is the original replica which was already running. So this pod will be simply sitting there and waiting in the standby mode if it ever gets a chance to become the new leader. Let's check what happens when we delete one of the pods. Let's open a lock for each of them in one of these windows.
Now we can see that in this window is the active operator which is watching for the resources and in this window is the one which is waiting to become the leader. And now we will delete the one which is the leader. We will just do it with kubectl delete to emulate what happens when the pod disappears or is deleted. What we can see is that this instance of the operator shut down and a new instance will be started. And when we watch this pod, we see that the failover is not immediate, but it always takes a few seconds. And after the few seconds, we actually see the message that the new leader is another pod, this time with the suffix v55pz. If we check the running pods again, we can see that this is the new pod which was started after we deleted the original one. And when I check the log of this pod, what we can see here is that it started and it became the new leader. This is how the leader election works. It doesn't necessarily guarantee that the older pod will always become the leader. It can also happen that the new pod becomes the leader first and the older pod will keep waiting. We just saw the leader election in action, but maybe we should talk a bit more about when does it make sense to run the cluster operator in multiple replicas and in which situation does it help. When the pod is deleted, in normal situation, Kubernetes will simply reschedule it and the new pod can continue to operate your Kafka clusters. In a situation like this, Running the operator in multiple replicas does not really help. But imagine a situation when a major disruption happens to your cluster. For example, the whole node crashes and disappears. Some of the pods will be rescheduled to the other nodes, but for some of them there might be no place. And if the cluster operator is among those which will not be rescheduled, then you are suddenly running without the cluster operator and nobody is operating your Kafka clusters. This is a situation where having multiple replicas of the cluster operator helps. Now, here you can see that we have three different replicas and the replica on the node one is the leader. Now let's see what happens in the same situation. The node one crashes and some of the pods are rescheduled. The cluster operator is not among them, but because we have two other replicas of the cluster operator running on the other nodes, one of them will become the new leader and will take over and will be able to manage your Kafka clusters even without the original cluster operator pod being rescheduled. Hopefully, this video helped you to understand how the leader election in Streamsy works. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and star us on GitHub. Thanks for watching.